Yo, what's good, everybody? It's me, your boy, Benjamin Banks. I got my co-host here with me, my boy, Travi. What's up, man? What's good, man? How you Travi doing Travi in the house. And <laughs> we welcome you to the world of leveling up with Benjamin Banks. How That's you right. doing, bro? I'm all right, man. I'm chilling. And Valentine's Day was last week. How was your Valentine's Day, man? I had a date with two beautiful little girls. Oh, for real? Yep. Zoe and Kylie. Oh, so and what did y'all do? We ate mac and cheese. Oh, we ate what heart- type of mac and cheese though? Mac and cheese. Wait, what type was it? That oh no, was it was it that craft in the box yeah, mac yeah. and cheese? Oh, that's okay. What, okay. And that's just what they like. Oh, okay. That's what they like. So we had the craft mac and cheese. <laughs> we had the pizza heart shape. We had the heart shaped pizza. What type of heart shaped pizza? Pepperoni. But from, from who though? Oh, okay, okay. And just then, just make hey, sure. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna have to bleep out the. They ain't paying us to announce their name on this podcast. Well, just say y'all had that pizza. We have, nah, I ain't saying nothing. What? Where'd we get that pizza from? You'll never know because they ain't supporting this podcast. Okay. All right. And uh, my dad made some strawberry chocolates. Chocolates? Like, yeah. Like strawberries covered with chocolate? Yeah. Or? All right. Did you save any for me? Like you, yeah, they're in the fridge. Did you? You didn't give me a Valentine's Day card. No roses. No, no roses. Nothing. No nothing. Well, you know, you my, gave you gave us a box of melted chocolates. Hey, that won't on me, man. It was on you. Hey, them chocolates was disintegrated. <laughs> it was goop. It was goop. Oh man. Hey, look. I, like I told you, bro. I'll get the girl some more chocolate. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know that it was going to be like that. The box, it was wrapped in plastic. Yes. You Open know. up the thing and <laughs> top was stuck to it. And I've I never seen chocolate melt like this ever in my life. Because it melts in your mouth, not in your hand. It melt in the box. <laughs> Something else about Valentine's Day. What? You bailed on your boy. Look, man. You know, sometimes there comes a moment in life where people got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> people got to move on. And look, man, I had a I had a date on Valentine's Day. I'm sorry, Trav. I just want to apologize to you for all our <laughs> all our listeners to hear because you know me and Trav we did set up a whole romantic date like we were supposed to go out and see Alita and I was supposed to eat dinner some, I, I, yeah have some craft mac and cheese and pizza but you know I got, I had a date on Valentine's Day like it was last minute and uh, we had a pretty good time man we uh I took her out to an Asian restaurant that's right and, what'd you get uh what was it called it was called like Golden Mountain Beef. That's that don't I sound had. like nothing on the Golden Mountain <laughs> beef. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she had beef and broccoli. And then after that, we went to go see that movie, uh, What Men Want. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was, was, right? it was all right, man. You know, I'm just I'm just mad that Mel Gibson didn't make a cameo. And that's, no the cameo. Only, that's the only thing. But other than that, I mean, like, we had a pretty good night. And it ended with a kiss for your boy, Benjamin Banks, because that's, that's right. how your boy rolls. And that's exclamation point. But this week... Not we, only was it Valentine's Day, what but else there happened? was a lot of news that Nintendo dropped yeah, this week. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy IX finally made its way to the Nintendo Switch. And it made its way to the Xbox One and PC as well. Like I feel like that's very huge because Final Fantasy IX, just Final Fantasy in general, has always been released on Sony systems. I think... Uh, Not, uh, well, no. I um, mean... 13 was on I'm, I'm talking about... No, bro. I'm talking about the original Final right, Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Games. I mean, yeah, of course you had 13 and uh, 15 released on, you know, cross platform, cross platform and whatnot. Same thing with Kingdom Hearts 3. But, you know, a lot of those classic. No, it's cool to definitely get the classic Final Fantasies on the newer consoles. Yeah, especially I think it works perfectly for Nintendo, that graphic style. Yeah, and then you could take it on the road with you. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just like uh, that's the best part of the switch. When the, PS, when the PSP first came out, and they had re-released Final Fantasy VII. I don't know if they released eight, but I know they released seven and nine for the PSP, and you could just take it on the go with you. I don't know. I don't know what's up with eight, man. Like I don't understand like why Sony and Square can't release Final Fantasy VIII on handheld consoles or on multiple cross platforms like well, that's crazy they did it on ps3 like you could buy yeah, it from yeah but you but not you know on the psp and like saying and anybody that's listening to this no, you can on, correct it had me. cross play on psp okay it did. okay yeah. all right, cool but i think uh i'm not sure but i think final fantasy 10 was also released as well on 
you know, cr- on cross platform. And if it's if it hasn't been released yet, ten has not made its way to the Switch yet, or the Xbox. Ten and ten it, too is both only coming on the, P- on the Switch. It's only right. on the PS4 and PS3. Right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I mean, but that's still a good jump for that game. I mean, Final Fantasy Nine is my favorite Final Fantasy and all of the series and we're going to be talking about that on a later episode so everybody make sure that you tune in to hear about me and Trav's favorite Final Fantasy games with a very special guest and what's his name? Sing Fate. Sing Fate. Your boy. Your Your boy boy, Sing Fate. Fate. But look so the Final Fantasy stuff aside I know you're super stoked on the Super Mario Maker too. Of course yes. I could give a a crap less. Why? Yeah, I I had to edit myself. Why? Uh, I, I just don't care about it. Did you, I don't you didn't want, play the first one? It's not that I didn't play it. I'm just not a fan of it. Anything like Roller Coaster Tycoon or anything where you got to make your own thing to play in, that's just not me. Well, bro, you don't have to make it's it. It's kind of like the restaurants where you cook your own steak. Yeah, but bro. Uh-uh, uh-uh, but you don't, but you don't have to play it, though. I mean, you could just get it just to play other, other people's, people's creations. Yeah. Like, it's like. Well, for, like Little Big Planet did it. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft exactly. does it. No, your boy don't do that. I mean, but you have to have a, a very good. Uh, you know creative mind in order to like play these games i mean it's it's pick up and play for anybody i mean like you can make very simple levels but i will say that when i had super mario maker like i used to make some levels based off of like other video games like i had made a level that was like uh, that paid homage to the original teenage mutant ninja turtles game that came out on the nes and that game was very very hard and i never beat it she said said. i said it first knock on wood but um yeah, there was also another game that was uh, announced too on Nintendo Direct, and that was The Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Now, yeah. that originally came out for the Game Boy. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, know, yeah, the Game I'm Boy. I'm talking for now y'all because you know, uh, you know, it's 2019, man. A lot of don't know uh, what a Game Boy. A is. lot of people don't. No, they know what a Game Boy is, no, but they, they don't know the Game original Boys. Game Boy. That giant block that needed four batteries and like those batteries didn't last long nope. and the screen was no green. color no color the screen was green all the games looked the same until the game boy color such came a, out such a bad like when it was cool at the time i guess i used to play wario on yeah. it tetris but you go back and look at it like how was this even enjoyable? no ba- no backlight like, so when you were on enjoyable? the road yo back in the day on those family roads well, they didn't make a backlight till the ds came out nah bro yeah nah. the game boy advance hold you on had the, yeah you had to cut, get the plug cut your boy man he's no. tripping they had they finally added backlight when the game boy advance came the advance no, they, sp that oh that's the what i meant i didn't mean ds i meant it, the, the sp game boy advance right. sp came out with that backlight and you didn't need the you hook. could turn it off and on yeah you didn't need to hook the, the little accessory. light light, yeah and i still have and that, that that light still sucked it did <laughs> bro i used to have the flashlight holding it up so Facts, i could play yeah. my game boy but you want to know what's crazy the game gear in my i was about opinion, to say the game gear was, was lit up right the game gear was better in my opinion but the bat that took Eight six batteries. Ba- no, six batteries. No, it took eight. No. Four on each side. No, three on each side, bro. I still got my game. I still got four. my game gear. We're six about batteries. A, we're about to have a duel. My game gear didn't last for 30 minutes. That's what she said. Um <laughs> now you was BS in no, thirty minutes. Yes, it depends. When well, you got them Dollar Tree batteries, son. Okay. They only last thirty that, minutes. I had that energizer. Nah, I had the bunny nah. going all night long. But I mean the game said. I mean, bro, like that's that's something that I definitely want to talk about on a future episode is handheld consoles because there's been a ton of them and they've definitely evolved from now, most of them ain't good. And that's including Nintendo's put out a lot of crummy. No, they haven't. Yeah, think about the original, um, not the original Game Boy, but the original DS. Not when they re-came out with the DS. The first DS they came out with, how blocky ah, man, it I was and it. how small. Oh, of course. No, of when, course. They, when they made the... Uh, the original DS was good, bro. No, the, I, no, I loved it's it, It's when man. they made the... What was the DS they came after, the smaller one? The DS Lite? Lite, I think is what it was called. That's when it was like, all right, this is cool. Yeah, the 3DS right. was great. Nah, bro. But no, that that first... Well, I, I liked it. No, the first Game Boy handheld that was good was, like you just said, the Advance that's The Advance. The Advance. No, not the Advance. No, the Advance bro, the Game Boy Advance was sweet because you could watch TV Game Boy shows Color was... Look, those were cool. 
Yeah, but they man. weren't good. Hey, look, we're gonna save that for yeah. Another. We'll say that. For we'll say that because it's it's a lot of it's a lot that we could talk about. But yeah, let's just uh, keep moving it on, man. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, we didn't even talk. Oh yeah, about, we didn't talk about Legend we, of Zelda. Yeah, yeah. see, because we just went off topic. But yeah, look, let go me, on, no, hold let on. Me just let's rewind. My it. Opinion, real quick. Hold, let's get the negativity. Hold on, real quick. Let me rewind. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. All right. Let me get the negativity out the way for this game. Yeah. I think it would have been cooler if they actually remade the game fully as a new Zelda would have been made and not it looks like a handheld game there's nothing wrong with that I don't like it why they should have made it more realistic nah me. bro it's, not, it's... I, not the cartoony Zelda nah, I don't like bro. Wind Waker and um you hate what's man. the uh one on 3ds that came out that's like, what two, i was just about to ago. bring up a, a a link between worlds that was a that was a I sequel. i don't like the cartoon that was a sequel to a link in time i don't like the cartoon like I, I don't like when link is three inches tall bro i'm with fine. a giant head i'm fine with it because that's the difference between the handheld games and the console no games. because wind waker was on the gamecube so it's not just this yeah but is that what was our something hand, but that's this something is not, dude, this is what our handheld games do. looked at like even when they had the game boy color those link games that they had those zelda games i remember he them. still was realistic just like he was on the n64 with majora's mask and he still of course smaller frame because it's on a handheld but it still had the vision of he actually looks like a full body man Bruh, not this little small body giant head nintendo look, stuff i love i love anything legend of zelda no. so, so I, sometimes like, you gotta say on, this is, it, is what they do is it good, on the switch or then, is it on the 3ds it's on the switch okay yeah see i i really need to get a switch man oh yeah me too because there's, there's there's so, too many there's, good games on the switch exactly i'm like, not trashing the switch there's a new um dragon ball game that's coming out for the switch uh the dragon ball heroes game which is finally well, a lot of which is finally out which is Switch. finally coming to america because it's like that game has been out since i want to say 2010 2011 and it's only been out in japan so well i'm it's, good on that. Cool. most dragon ball z games are trash nah, i'm good on that nah, i'm ready for this not. new fire emblem nah. that they pushed back again no bro i'll tell you what i'm ready for no hold on bro nah bro this new fire emblem i've never been in the fire emblem because you're not a tactical person. Uh, nah, I am a tactical person, bro. You know, that's why I got my Metal Gear Solid, so that way I can... It's not know. the same kind of tactics. Nah, this is chess thing, tactics. Bro, nah. Well, I'll tell you what game I'm looking forward to that's coming out on the Switch. And Preach to him. Which makes me really want to get a Switch, and that's Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Hold on. You're t that's the game that makes you want to get the Switch. Of course, like, That bro. was the title. Because you remember, you didn't get a PS4 I, Because Spider -Man, Spider Man came out. It was like, that's the title I need to get a PS4. Bro. You're telling me <laughs> all the games Ultimate is Switch. Alliance 3 is it's the gonna one that's going to make me get a Switch. No. Yes, yes, no. yes, yes. It, I mean, like, like we said, man, there's a ton of good games on the Switch. But yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is the game that's going to finally make me get a Switch, man. Because the reason why I say that is because I've always been a fan of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I had the first one. I had the first the one's one. good. The first one was good. The second one was trash. Yes. And they've it's been rumors. Also, their mobile games are trash. There's never been a Marvel. No, not. The, no, not they the, did. But, but not in this series. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's like. There have been rumors for years that they were coming out with a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, and it was finally announced, I will believe, last month that they're coming well, out. Well, the first with one. one's got to be at least 10 years old. Yeah, I mean, I've been mean, playing the first one now, and it's Nine trash. Nine or 10 years, yeah. It's trash. But now. it was hot when it came out. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to it. I had it for the 360 it. when it came out. I can't wait to see, you know, what addition, new additions they're going to have to it. The X Men are in it. Um, you know, my boy Wolverine, he's in that yellow and blue outfit from the classic As he should be. From the classic X-Men. That's my favorite Wolverine outfit. So you, they need to get rid of the all black outfit. Yeah. Gotta be the yellow and blue. Well, see, you know all that came because of the X-Men. Yeah, yeah. Movies, yeah. Man. Yeah. So I mean it's fine. I mean to each his own, man. But hey, um, have you played Jump Force yet? No, I know you have. I know you get look. Not doing that, you bought yourself a birthday present. You pre-ordered it. You was like, man, I'm ready to go pick up. You thought it came out Tuesday, and they were like, they hit you with the. They hit me with they, the. Sorry, this the collector. The this is the collector's edition. You need to spend an extra forty. Yeah, they said that. They're the like, ultimate, no, sir. The ultimate edition was like a hundred dollars. I was just like, no, no, deal. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> like, now imagine if you were like, oh, right, I'll do it. And then said, what? Like, like Soldier Boy, a hundred dollars. 
but nah but uh yeah man i i got it yesterday and i don't know why i don't know what's up with games coming out on fridays like i've always preferred them to come out on tuesday right early in the week but uh yeah i did well everything it. switched over to friday like cds come out on friday movies come out on friday that's crazy a couple years ago because now you get the full week Instead of on, you get from Tuesday to Friday, well, Saturday going into midnight. Now you get a full week as far as sales go and no, numbers I get what you're and saying. stuff. I get what you're saying. So yeah. that's why they made the switch to Friday. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you know, since I got it and I've been playing it, um, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Like, if anybody has played the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games, I'll compare it to that. It's kind of like. I'll say it's Dragon Ball Xenoverse Light. Like, the combo, it's only one combo for real. Like, you just tap the square button and it does an auto combo. And then you have. Oh, God, that's already trash. You have we a we talked about that on the last podcast. You have a heavy combo where, you know, you do three strikes, but it's like the game, it's okay, but it's kind of boring. Um, I'm having fun with it so far just because of the moves that you, you can spent do. that $60 just because of the you... moves that you can do. Like some of the moves look sweet, um, but it does have a lot of flaws. Like, I mean, I know some people don't care that, you know, it's in Japanese and it has subs, but there's a lot of fans that are upset that it's not dubbed. I mean, like this huge of a That's game. That's too many characters to dub with too many different people that do the dubbing yeah but you know what they would have to go through to dub all and not all those characters have the same contracts and like they're all not funimation yeah and all that stuff that's just too it's just too much yeah that makes sense but still the money probably didn't make sense to even do it it's just too much you know do you want to see deku with another voice or no no, exactly so what do you do you just keep it as it is but i mean and that's like the best alternative i will say this though i am happy that you know, we are getting games from Japan that were like just exclusive to Japan. Because yeah. A long time ago, it's like the only way you could play them was just getting it like as is. And you didn't understand what they were saying. Like there weren't any subtitles. And I don't understand why Japan does that. Like um, my ex, she had got me the Resurrection of F special edition from Japan. And I was happy about it because it came with a bunch of cool stuff, but it didn't have subtitles on. But you got to complain the Funimation about that. Why didn't they do Funimation special edition was trash? Yeah, it was. Uh, once again, it was nothing. It was nothing. But the Japanese every, one, every even with the My Hero coming out, they did nothing. Nothing cool. Nothing cool at all. Like, dude, do something a cool poster. to make us spend an extra twenty third. Like, we'll spend the extra twenty to thirty dollars if you put it in a cool box. And all these other things give me that an you art could book, do what, something. They, they do just give you nothing. a post. They give you a poster. Why? What makes me want to buy that? Because it ain't the movie. I can see the movie for free online. Like nothing stopping anybody in today from just watching a movie on a fire stick. So what are you going to do that is cool to give you my money? As far as having something that I can personally hold in my hands, they've done nothing. Well, have you watched the My Hero Academia movie? No, I still ain't seen it yet. Okay. And it's only because I didn't get to see the dub in theaters. I have never watched it sub because me and Zoe just watch it dub and yeah. it's our thing. So I don't watch it. I'm probably going to go back later on and watch it sub. Afterwards, but yeah. right now, like, that's our thing. So what's it called? We do it. We see everything for the first time together. Yeah. I, no, I understand, man. Um, I saw that it's been uploaded online. I yeah, didn't, I'm I didn't, not going to watch it. I didn't it. watch it. Um, it's I heard- the same thing when they already uploaded like the brawly yeah they already movie. and i was like i'm not watching that i'm gonna wait because just wait yeah i saw it in theaters i saw how great everything was you rather wait i'd rather wait and appreciate see it, it. Yeah, yeah exactly i understand i understand man. also um so jump force yeah it could have been better yeah but, it could have i mean i mean if if you're a huge anime fan definitely get it because it is a good game well i'm not gonna buy a game. i never buy a game for characters but i mean you got to give me more than i don't think i don't think that. it well the story if the game the story is okay good, yeah but if the, the sto- gameplay isn't good i'm not nah. i'm not giving you 60 dollars. and the load time so i guarantee you in two months it'll probably drop down to 35 no, 40 won't. bucks and this definitely isn't a game that's gonna like you would see at competitive competitions or anything right like and that. that's a shame but I mean, other than that, I mean, like, it's a cool game. It's a cool game to have, but it's not worth the $60. And, you know, speaking of anime, 
that Alita movie came out last week, and I'm planning on going to see it soon. The one we didn't see. The one that we didn't see. The one see. we were supposed to see. Yeah, because see. I canceled on you, and I'm I'm so sorry. But I do plan on going to see it soon um, because I watched the anime, the OVA. The OVA. I watched the OVA, and I was just like, man, it's like I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie when it comes out in theaters. Well, I hope nobody is comparing this movie to the Of OVA. course not. Be, uh, no, there, the mo- there's going to be people Oh, of that- course. Of course, but bro, it's like this movie. Don't is, do that. This movie is PG thirteen. Right. The original series is very bloody, gory, and it has nudity in it. So uh, you're not going to be seeing any of that in this movie if you're expecting it. Well, reviews are already out for this movie. Yeah, what are they saying? They're saying fights. They're good. Like a lot of people were really impressed with the fight scenes, but the dialogue is trash. And the movie, how it's put together, it's, it's just not good. It's no. not good. Well, you know, I've always been one of those type of people to not go off of what reviews say. I mean, I know we've talked about this before, like with Death Note. Oh, yeah, Note, I'm still going to see it. Like with Death Note, like you thought I'm Death excited Note was to trash, see it. but I thought Death Note was okay. So. New topic. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but, um, you know, speaking of Heroes 2... Um, Doom Patrol came out last week as well. I think did it something something else came out last week too. Um, besides Doom Patrol, but I mean, just to say on the topic of Doom Patrol, uh, Doom Patrol came out on the DC Network. And the first episode's getting great reviews. It's getting great reviews, and as expected, we ju- we watched the trailer for the second episode. I didn't watch earlier. it because I don't like to be spoiled. But Trav, it's a trailer that's after the first he, episode. I'm still gonna watch and the they uploaded. It. It's open for everybody. I'm to not see, gonna watch so. it. Just just like. Like how this dude tried to get me to watch the Kingdom Hearts open. I'm like, no, I wait till the game comes out. That's just how I am. Okay, let's let's talk about that for one minute, real quick. All I right. can't believe we haven't even, we didn't even think to talk about Kingdom Hearts three. It's trash on this episode. No, it's, it's definitely trash. not trash. It's trash. Let me t- and I know I'm you're messed, just trolling, yeah, troll. <laughs> <laughs> but look, don't waste your money. I will. On it. I will say this. That in, that was the worst intro video that they've ever done. For Kingdom Hearts? Yes. And let me tell you what I had an issue with. It was just a video to have a video. It did not play into how the game started or anything at all. It was just, we're going to throw a bunch of cool cutscenes together and do something. And then they played the whole song in its entirety. Like, and, yeah, the cool th- part about doing something like that is you have the song and then you have hey we took the song and chopped it up together and created like a dumbed down version of the song they just played you a three and a half minute video that led into nothing yeah it was just there to there then for all this looks cool that's it so that's my real that's one of my bones to pick spoiler can i say as, as a minor spoiler but yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and tell everybody because I was very disappointed in this. I mean, I haven't. People have seen the reviews. I probably. haven't gotten this far in the game yet, but um, I, I had, know what you're going to say. I had asked Trav because he doesn't have the game, and he told me that one of his friends had told him about the Final Fantasy characters in the game. And he said he wasn't going to let me know because he wanted me to play the game. So I went ahead and looked up to see if there was going to be any Final Fantasy characters in the game. And lo and behold. There are no Final Fantasy. That is a shocker, game. though. And I'm I'm disappointed in it because I'm like, originally when the first Kingdom Hearts game came out, when it was said it's a cross between Final Fantasy and Disney, I thought it was weird. But then when I played it, I was just like, wow, like this is crazy. Yeah, this is cool. Like, this is really cool. Then when Final, then when Kingdom Hearts two came out, and then they added even more Final Fantasy characters into it, I'm just like, man, it's like this is really really cool. And then when we were getting close to Kingdom Hearts three. I'm like, okay, so we're probably going to see Lightning, Noctis. You would think that they would introduce some one no, or two of the newer Final none, Fantasy characters. None. Because the, and they said that the reason why they didn't include any Final Fantasy characters in the game was because they the, didn't ser- the series was strong stand enough on its own. without Final Fantasy but characters. But that doesn't make any sense because no, the that, series itself is based off of Final the Fantasy whole series is across promotion yeah. between both of them. So, I mean, like they have like little small cameos like from stuff from the Final Fantasy series, but yeah, and they showed in the intro video too. Yeah, like, they show people in the intro video, but that's that's it, man. And, you know, I was nobody re- plays a factor in the story. No, which makes no sense. 
So, with that being said, I think we've done enough uh, rambling. Yeah, for real. And, hey, uh, hey, hey, it's cool. I mean, no, no, it's, a it's, lot of stuff happened. Like, we didn't even stuff. talk about everything on our list. We just kind of. No, I think we did. We just kind of hit no, a we, couple random things. We didn't talk about Resident Evil 2. We didn't talk about um, My Hero coming out in Japan. We, did we didn't talk, talk about. Talk my about Hero. Not not the movie, just yeah, they got briefed it, over or whatever, but so much news has come out this month alone that it's just wild. Now, you just can't talk kids. about everything. So, um, Well, I'm going to say something about Resident Evil 2 real quick. It's really fun. It's really scary. Uh, Mr. X. Really scary. Mr. X is a badass. Like, my... My anxiety goes up whenever like he's chasing me. Like I've posted videos online of being chased by him and liquor. So now, it's a really good game. Highly recommend it. Now, and it's coming out. Oh, that's what that's what came out last week. Um, DLC for Resident Evil Two: um, The Ghost Survivors, where you get to play as other survivors of Raccoon yeah. City. At the time, I, I haven't downloaded it yet, but I'm going to make sure to download it so I, I can play. No, I was going to ask you because remember. Leading up to the game, you was upset about them having microtransactions but there aren't any. in the game. I think I think somebody just said that, but I didn't. I haven't seen any microtransactions in the game right. at all. So um, the only thing that I'm not a fan of is they have DLC costumes, and again, it's kind of like what we were talking about, like with the fighting game. I'm not gonna pay money for extra characters. people. I like skins. Nah, I I'm mean, good. Uh, like they don't they don't do anything for the game. They're just costumes to wear. Well. I'm for somebody like me who enjoys skins, you have games like Apex Legends that just came out that, as you know, I've been super, super heavy playing. And that's their thing is everything you get is just skins. Like, you get banners and skins and all the characters are there minus two. Pretty much all the loot box stuff is skins. Skins for your guns, skins for your clothing, different sayings. So stuff, I mean, you can pay real world money or you can earn money in the game to buy it. But stuff like that, I like custom building characters and making them my own. Like I play as Lifeline. My li- I don't want my Lifeline to look like anybody else's Lifeline. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, man. Or it's going to be hard to encounter that Lifeline. You might. You might, but it's, you're not, though. Yeah, because you can't fully customize the skin, but they do have a lot of options. You know that there's probably a good 25 different skins for each character. Well, so. I'm going to definitely make sure that I do check out. It's Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Yeah, because I've been hearing a lot of people talk about it. and It's people, just an adult Fortnite. People, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. It's a realistic. And people want me to play with them. And, you know, I really don't play online like I used to. So I might check it out just to give it a try. And if you do want to play with me online. Do, do. You can add me at XDMoney23X. That's me on PSN. And then on Xbox One, I'm X. Space D space money space twenty three space X. Wow, yes, that's, that's a lot of spaces. Yeah. Okay, but uh, you know, moving along on today's episode, who we got? We got our good friend. That's right. She was a former admin in Roshi's Island, Shirley. Shirley. Hey. So what's going on? How's your night going? It's going pretty well. I've had a very relaxing day besides going to work out. So it was good. How about you guys? Uh, We've been doing pretty well. Um, You know, me and Trav, we work together. So it's like uh, I give him a hard time at work all day. So that's that's, yeah, that's what she said. So that's our day for real. And um, I just finished working out at the gym. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm full of energy right now. I don't know if I'm going to go to sleep tonight. So uh, I don't know about Trav. I'll probably just uh, be watching anime all night, and I'll keep him up all night tonight. We're very excited to have you up here, Shirley. Like, I'm I'm Thank really you. happy about this. Trav's really happy about this. Everybody that's listening is really happy about this. And I just want to say again, thank you for joining us. Of course. No, I'm super excited. And I'm excited for your guys' podcast journey as well. Thank you. I'm sure you guys are going to do really well. Yeah, the 
the response we got on the first episode alone was pretty overwhelming. Like, I didn't expect that many people to check it out. And Well, I mean, bro, you got to understand. I mean, I am Benjamin Banks. Okay. You know, I, <laughs> you know I, am, I am somewhat famous. And, you know, people do know who I am. So, you know, you got to take it how you take it. He's famous. Yeah. Like, famous. Like famous Amos. <laughs> so, um, before we get into all the stuff with you and your career now i just wanted to know like when you were growing up if you were into like the nerd culture stuff were you into comics or cartoons on tv or i 100 percent was uh nice. i'm actually the oldest of four kids and i had no one to tell me what was cool or not cool um, <laughs> so I just kind of figured things out on my own and I was always super into cartoons and like, um, Pokemon, Digimon, Sailor Moon, awesome. um, even Power Rangers, like just loved anything that was kind of like sci-fi type of thing. I also grew up really loving horror movies. Um, my dad love was like a huge, huge movie buff. So um, I definitely got my movie connoisseurism from him. Um, so I eventually, we didn't really grow up with a lot of money. So my mom would just take us to the library and we would kind of have free reign. And I was reading any and every book I possibly could. Like my mom had to limit because we had so many kids. Like you're only allowed to get three books, Shirley. And I'd be like, but I have seven. Yeah, you know, so. I remember those days. <laughs> and um, my books were always super ranged from fiction, nonfiction, romance, and also manga. And um, my sisters would always end up reading my manga. They thought it was really cool. Um, and that's something that she and I would definitely bond on a lot as well. You know, what's crazy is I never, I'm still really not into manga. What? Too much. And now, what? but my daughter's super into it. You know, she just read Thank God. the first volume of My Hero Academia. But you remember, I don't know if you had this down in Florida, but we had like these AR points and the bigger the book was, the more points you got for taking the hold test. On, hold, hold on real quick, Shirley. It's like you saying we, like we had it. I don't even know I'm, what you're talking about, man. Look, you got to remember, man, I grew up in the hood. So, I mean, I'm guessing that AR stuff is it, something. It was pretty much you read a book, you take a test on it, you get points, and you nah. had to get certain points every nine weeks or whatever. So, so I mean, I would yeah. hit the library hard and get like the, the biggest book I could find, knock out all my points in one in one book. Shirley, yeah, did you I have would, that? Um, they I, they did that for summer for us. They wouldn't do it year round. Oh yeah, the summer reading uh, list. Mm -hmm, the summer reading programs. You would read whatever book that they like. There was a whole bunch of books on the list, and whatever you read that was on the list. I like never said, read a single I'm, summer reading list. I'm just, book. <laughs> I'm just I'm just sitting here shaking my head because we didn't have this in my school. Well, I didn't mean we as you and I. When I said we, I just meant general population of Chesapeake. Okay, well I'm not from Chesapeake. Right. You know, look, man, Norfolk, Norfolk public schools they just gave us a book told us to read it and that was it we ain't get we ain't get no points or nothing i mean they did give us uh the pizza hut did y'all have that the pizza hut uh yeah the pizza party oh, yeah, yeah there we go the pizza, pizza party. party yeah so mm -hmm. so i was or they gave you the coupon you get your own personal yeah pizza so thing. so i did start oh, yes. yeah yeah so i did start reading because of that your free pizza I remember that. <laughs> and we were talking about when you would get those, they gave you like a video game demo back in the day, if you remember that. Yeah, they used to give out the uh, the PS1 the, demos. Yeah. I always had video game consoles later than everyone. Mm. So. Hey, Shirley. Hey, yeah. I was the same way. <laughs> like, it's like the way my mom, look, when the PS2 was out, we still had the 64. So yeah. it's like, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> So, yeah, so this is a question that I have for you. What made you want to get into cosplay? Um, so I've always uh, grown up learning to sew things uh, for my mother. And uh, I used to sew my Barbie clothes and make, like, really fashionable things. And, um, and whenever I would do stuff for school, 
you know, we didn't have a lot of money. So like if my budget for my prom dress was a hundred dollars, like that was my budget. And I had to work with that. And my mom would help me alter my dress or, you know, do things to really spice that up. And, um, we did a lot of like, you know, thrift store shopping and stuff like that. And we would kind of just work with what we had. So I just grew up changing my clothing and modifying it to my style or what I felt was fashionable at that time. Um, And then as I got older, you know, later on in high school, I went to my first convention when I was I was 18, and after school, I just packed up all my friends in my little hatchback and was like, we're going to the con, and, you know, I had never really been on the highway before. I had no idea what I was getting into, but we went and went away for a weekend, and I saw all these people dressing up in costumes, and I was like, this is amazing. No one told me I could wear a costume to this thing, so... Since that day, um, 18 years old, I've just kind of been like, I want to wear costumes now. So I, uh, the next convention I went to, I went as uh, like Vampire Princess Mew. Oh, and then man. I started to get more creative and being able to make things that I went into and started getting changing, even going away from sewing and going into a different type of craft. So I don't know, I guess just seeing all these people in costumes I got jealous. Like, I was like, I want to be that person. I want, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. When I see cool, like, when I see super cool cosplays, I'm like, I can't even fathom how they even built it. Yeah. Because I am not that kind of creative person where I can, like, make something. So it just fascinates me that people can make these makeshift costumes and they look like 1,000% From legit. the comics, from TV right. shows and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. It's like, I feel like you have to be very skilled, you know, with doing that. And, you know, like Shirley was saying earlier, like how, you know, her mom taught her how to sew and whatnot. Like, I really feel that that goes hand in hand when it comes to cosplay and, you know, honing your craft and whatnot. Yeah, I know you were saying, like, you went to the con and you were seeing people dressed up and you were like, holy crap, I didn't know we could do that. Do you, like, recall any or, like, anybody specific that inspired you to cosplay when you were doing that? Um, I don't know anyone in specific. I will tell you that I do remember it was probably, like, my third or fourth convention that I had gone to. I saw Yaya Han. Um, And this is like super early, like, you know, she was not very well known. What? I'm sorry to cut you off, Shirley. Like, what year was that? Because I I, I know who Yaya Han is and like she's very huge now in the cosplay community. Yeah, no, I I, it was totally I, I was in my my early 20s. So it was like. 13 years ago, I Dang. think it was. And I saw her at a convention. She had a little booth and she had all these little pictures, like not even like big prints, like a lot of cosplayers have now. They had little, And she was just the most gorgeous woman. I was like, oh, she's so hot. She <laughs> looks so cool. I don't even remember what costume she was wearing, but I was like, what are these? And she's like, Oh, I saw pictures of myself. I was like, Oh, you do. You look so great. Like <laughs> I couldn't believe like oh, that you was do. the thing, you know? Um, but I definitely remember when I went to my first convention, the, the, a lot of the costumes that I saw that I was kind of like, Oh, that's so cool. And I want to do that was a lot of sailor moon costumes. Um, I, I like, I was super impressed by the amount of sailor moon costumes that I saw and like the big groups that they had did as well. And I was like, Oh, like more, can you imagine like cosplaying with more than one person and this big group and having the entire group, like it would just like would make my head spin. And it's crazy because the sailor moon cosplay is still popular. super popular yeah. all these years later. Like it hasn't lost its touch or you got kids coming up you know, 16, 17 years old, going to their first cons and dressing up as Sailor Moon characters. Mm-hmm. And I eventually finally did it. I dressed up in a big Sailor Moon costume. Uh, I was Chibi Moon, and, like, we had the entire group at um, KatsuCon about two two years ago, I want to say. Yeah, I love when people do that. Do the groups yeah. and Or stuff. I love when they get a group together and then they reenact scenes or whatever from the anime. 
Oh yeah, I love um, seeing like the skit shows and the skit yeah. performances. Yeah. Oh, yeah. those were the best. So, how many cosplays have you done so far since you've been doing it? Uh, because I mean, like you know, I remember when I first started following you on Facebook. And I had saw some of, you know, the earlier ones that you did. And like, you know, even, you know, going on today with the stuff that you're doing now. And it's like, you've done, you've done a lot of cosplays from what I've seen. I, I could do more. I've been trying to invest in doing bigger builds and that take a little bit more time. Um, I do have a full-time job, so it definitely, I focus on one and then I get it done and then I go for the others. Sometimes I can do two at a time, but I would say I've done over 20, yeah, maybe a lot. over 25. What's your favorite? Ooh, mm, it changes a lot. <laughs> um, I would say the one I, I would have, so I have a top two. Okay. And my top two um, and it, a lot of it has to do with nostalgia reasons and kind of um, like passion. So I've always been a huge, huge, huge Xena Warrior Princess um, fan. Like, uh, like she was always my queen. Oh yeah, that, and, that was Lawless. on television when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, for Lucy sure. Lawless, man. Yeah, and I, um, it was my very first time working with Warbla, and um, that skirt was hell uh, i had to put all these grommet like so all these like almost like dragon scale looking things for the skirt and then put them all these metal grommets in it i actually found that skirt at a thrift store it was like super like past the knee length skirt and i was like this is great i'm gonna have so much extra leather to work with you know and and i did and it was a lot of fun and it was definitely one of those where I stayed up until three o'clock in the morning, the night before the convention, putting it together and painting it and making sure everything was good. And the reaction that I got at the convention I wore it to had so many amazing reactions and just made me feel like, oh, I did a great job. Like it solidified my work and my effort and my passion that I put into it, even though I was up all night the night before putting the finishing touches on it. Um, so Xena is definitely my top. I'd say my next one would have to be my Krang. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I had a feeling you was going to say that. Yeah. Krang is, um, again, nostalgia. People look at it and they're like, who? Oh, oh, you know, like I can see the expressions on their face change. Like I get it. I get what she is. And they're like, it's, you're so cool. You look so awesome. And, and I even had, um, one guy, he was with his son and he was like, Hey, do you know who, she, do you know who she is? Can you guess who she is? And her and his son was like, yeah, she's crying. And he was like, I was like, I'm so proud of you. You're such a good father. You taught your son Ninja Turtles. Yeah, he, like, ra he raised him right. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, Ninja Turtles has a really big place in my heart, too. Like, I grew up loving um, not just the cartoon, but also the video games. Um, I have so many memories. My brother got all the Ninja Turtles stuff, and I would always play with it. So, um, because my parents were like, you know, boys get boy toys and girls get girl toys. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, nah, man, I want, I need Krang's hideout. I have this big super <laughs> what was it out of the I had the van. Mm -hmm. I was, I was in it. So, but they also learned that I'm a really good sharer and my brother and I could <laughs> share things easily. So, um, but yeah, those, those are definitely my top two costumes still yet of all time. Who was your favorite Ninja Turtle? My favorite Ninja Turtle. <sighs> So I would have to say Michelangelo. <laughs> oh, good choice. Okay. I was going to have to unfriend you if you said Donatello. Dude, and I knew you were going to bring that up, too. Bro, all he got is a stick. It don't matter. I always get crapped on for liking Donnie. <laughs> but let me tell you, man. Donnie? I mean, like, Leo's the quote-unquote leader. But yeah. Donnie's the glue of the group, man. Like, if they need yeah. something, Donnie's the go-to yeah, guy. Yeah, he's, he's definitely the brains Thank of you. the operation. Yeah, but come on. He, he just got a stick. He is badass with the, with the stick, man. Do you know what it's called? No. It's not called a stick. I, I call it a stick. You call it a stick, it's but a let staff. me tell you. The staff, whatever. Yeah. I know he's whooping some ass. <laughs> I know that. 
Heroes in a half shell, turtle power. Um, so, you know, you saying those two were your favorite. What do you think is the one that got, like, the most reaction online or whatever the case may be? Like, what do you think's your hottest cosplay that garnered the most attention? Um, I have to, like, go through my Rolodex and my brain of... That's cool. ...what and who I've cosplayed. Um, my Silk cosplay actually gets a lot of attention. Um, that's one of my most liked pictures on the internet is my silk cosplay and, um, trying to think who else. Oh my gosh. I have so many. I'm like, need to walk over to my closet. Oh yeah. Um, I know. <laughs> my star Lord. I used to wear my star Lord to conventions and go to like the raves and go dancing. And I would always get a lot of hype reaction about it too. Doing my star Lord dancing. So like is, is there person, a vi- is there a video online of the Star Lord dancing? Star Lord dancing? Yeah, is there a video online for it? Of me? Yeah. No. Ah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, there's there's so many. It's so funny. I was looking through all my pictures today on Facebook, like from like the past like ten years, and there's so many pictures of me dancing, and I am like breaking down on the floor and i'm like nobody stops me no but just people just let me keep doing this <laughs> why do people keep letting me do this <laughs> i'll tell you one of my i think favorites that you did and because this might be my favorite superhero is when you did the the reverse flash oh thank cosplay. you you did that at dragon con yes i wore that at dragon con um we had a zoom but the zoom had to drop out for health reasons and we had a a flash but we kept running into dragon con is so massive yeah, i know we it's running crazy. into issues and we ended up not ever seeing each other and but we still oh, got man that would have been wild by the though. same photographer we tried so hard it was crazy no i really thought that outfit was like super sweet thank you that mask cost me like three dollars if that <laughs> materials but i was super proud of that mask and how it came out and how fast I did that mask too. Like I was, I impressed myself. So I was like, Oh, I could do this again. Give me more, give me more challenges. And that yeah. definitely got me excited to work on bigger projects. Too. Well, yeah. Cause I remember you posted the picture of her and was like, I'm going to cosplay this. And the outfit was like legitimately spot on. Thank so, you. So yeah, mad props on, you know, doing that cosplay. Thank you so much. My favorite cosplay that you did was the storm. That the was, storm one was the storm one. That oh, was my yeah. favorite one. You that know you did. what? Now that I think about it, I did get a lot of attention for storm. Um, I've worn it three different ways. And every time I wore storm, I get a lot of positive reactions. And I wore it again at Dragon Con with the new updated suit. And people were like, oh, my God, like taking pictures of me left and right and just so excited. And um, it's it's definitely one of my more recognizable costumes. And the fact that I had a rogue with me, you know, all day, we were like a power team. And it was it was awesome wearing that. Yeah, I was about to say, did you do a different cosplay each? Did you do Dragon Con all three days? Yes. And, and you I did a different, different costume? costume. Mm-hmm. I had a costume for the bunny hutch too, um, but I ended up not being able to go because I was really sick that night. Mm-hmm. So I had four costumes, but I <laughs> ended up with three. That, that's still super yeah. impressive when people do that, though. Like, yeah. I can't imagine the, the prep work that goes into the, like, the bigger cons, like Dragon yeah. Con and stuff like that. People really put like months of planning and into the mm-hmm. stuff that they're going to wear. And it's like, I know like one of my friends who does cosplay, um, it's like she was telling me that, you know, like she has a cost, a costume that she's going to wear early in the day, then in the afternoon yeah. and then at night. And I'm just like, wow, like and that's a lot. That's a lot of going back. A lot of people will put like their whole, like on their Instagram story, they'll go live and like, you're it feels like you're at the con now yeah you know seeing everybody's thing what do you what do you plan on doing in the future like is there any that you can reveal to us that you're kind of working on or yeah actually um so currently i'm gonna start working on it tonight i've had a really relaxing day so now i feel like i have a lot of energy to do so um i'm going to start working on 
uh, costumes for KatsuCon. So KatsuCon is a super huge convention in Washington, D.C., yep. and it's in February. Yep. And if you've never been, I highly recommend. It's I've I never mean, been. I've never been either. Our, our boy Singh's been multiple times to KatsuCon. If you like cosplay, it is the convention to yeah. go to. It is like cosplay central. Um, so I'm going to be cosplaying uh, Mermista from She-Ra. Have you seen the new She-Ra? Oh Netflix? yeah, I I binge watched it in like two days. It's gold. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Oh, yet. dude, it's good. Like it's, it doesn't. You look at it and it's like, eh, I don't know about this. No, it's good. It's, it's really that. How many how many episodes is it? It's uh, I think there's like, I want to say like fifteen. Episodes. Oh, okay. I was gonna say thirteen. So, but yeah, it's yeah. somewhere in there. But that's pretty sweet, man. Because when I was growing up, I was huge into He Man and. She Ra not too much because like I was like a six year old boy, so yeah. it's like He Man's my dude. But that's a badass <laughs> cosplay that um you're gonna end up doing. I can't wait to see those pictures. Thanks. And then um my other two costumes are I'm um, gonna be doing another version of Alora from v- Voltron. Dude, nice. So another one that Netflix like revived, yeah. and then they Don't, just it's like she doing up. the she yeah. doing the classics. <laughs> <laughs> she was reviving the classics. I like that. Yeah, so um, Allura, I've already done uh, her super suit, like her power suit for it. Right. Mm-hmm. But there is an episode that they do that is basically where they're all playing a Dungeons and Dragon game. And um, so Allura has it where she's basically an archer and her costume just looks so cool. It definitely has some armor involved. And I was like, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do her uh, D&D outfit from Voltron. And then my last costume is I'm going to do one of the versions of uh, Bowsette. Now, um, and I don't want you to like give away your secrets or anything like that, but when you see something and like you were just saying, I'm going to do that outfit, what's the process like? Where do you even begin to start building this (laughs) this outfit? Um, So I, I do like to kind of, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm a really good artist like drawing is not my forte right. I, I'm definitely a better painter I definitely a better crafter so I know a lot of cosplayers are able to draw so they'll draw out their designs I will write it out <laughs> and like list you know this is what I need to do these are the pieces I need to work on this is what I'm going to make it out of um, so what I do is I take a look at all of my photos that I have, my reference photos for the costume. And then I'll write down all the pieces that I need to make and what I'm going to make them out of, whether I'm going to add material, what color I'm going to make it. I'll try my best to kind of draw schematics. Right. But if but anyone the ever in found them, I'd be super embarrassed. <laughs> Because they look like a five-year-old Drew. Mm. <laughs> hey, can can you send me a picture? I won't post it online, <laughs> but it's like it's like I want to I want to see what these drawings look like. <laughs> It'd be like Shirley. What is you doing? Yeah, now? The drawings <laughs> and the dance videos. Send them all. Yeah, around. I want to. I want to see this stuff, man. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that like one of your friends recorded you dancing. Like, that's what friends do. They record their friends when they do stuff like that. So there's I, a picture of me in my Star Lord costume where I'm definitely mid dancing. Um, <laughs> So I'll have to find that picture and send it to you. Um, cool, cool. I don't think anyone took a video at the time, but there's definitely a picture of me. And I'm like, arms out, like, what's up? Like, dancing on the floor with my <laughs> mask on. So you, like, you can't even tell it's me. It's just Star-Lord in their mask. Well, you know, um, that's how Star-Lord is. It's like... That's one of the things that I loved about the Guardians of the Galaxy movie was the dance scenes. And then oh, who can the forget the, the, icon, the iconic dance battle at the end of the first movie? You know, that was really cool. Yeah, that movie um, reminds me. I think Star-Lord, actually, his character reminds me a lot of my father. And that's why I liked him so much. I was like, oh, this is like all the things my dad would love. And I was so excited Um Every year for Christmas when we meet up, because I told you my dad's a really big movie buff. Yeah. I always make him watch the new Marvel movie <laughs> that came out that year. Um, so when Mar- when Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one came out, I made him watch it. He was like, 
that was really good. <laughs> uh, and, and like for him to say that, I was like, yes, because he's such a harsh critic. He's he's always like Hollywood, you know, like he's super not impressed by anything. He really enjoyed that movie. And I was like, I would have been heartbroken if he didn't. And then he watched the second one and he was like, it wasn't as good as the first one. But I, still I said the same it. thing. See, I, think the second, I, I, think the I agree with him. Even better. Now, nah, it's like I felt like the second one was a lot more filler than you know, I was hyped for it at first, but then it's like after watching it, it's just like, eh, the first one's better. Yeah. I enjoyed it for at its face value, but I, the, the first one was good. The second one, I, the music was really great, too. Yeah, of course. And and I feel like it was definitely a, a little bit more filler, I would say. Yeah, but to me, it's that opening scene in the second one sold me immediately. Yeah. Like, oh, as soon as that, that opening scene best. happened, I was like, this movie's about to be gold. And you with, had your boy, Baby, Baby Groot. Groot? That, oh yeah, Baby Groot. It was so <laughs> badass and so cute at the same time. <laughs> <It really> like, <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of Marvel, I'm glad that we're on that topic. Uh, a few months ago, you were on Marvel Becoming. Uh, tell us, like, how were you selected to become a part of that? Um, so I got this message in my Facebook, like my cosplay Facebook page one day. And it was like, hey, I'm Judy and I work for Marvel Studios and we're interested in possibly having you in one of our upcoming shows about featuring you with your cosplay. I was like, that's a joke. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would have no thought way. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I immediately look this person, like she gives me her email and everything. Like I look this person up and just put in her info on Google and sure enough, all of her credentials are there. Like she legit worked for Marvel. And I was like falling out of my chair. I was like, what? No, but how, well, how does she find you know, me? Like, <laughs> it's just, it was like a dream come true. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. You know, they just, and, um, I call, I emailed her back and was, she was like, you know, can you send me some pictures of you doing some Marvel cosplays? And I was like, you got it, you know, cause I've got like 10 Marvel cosplays. So I yeah. sent her yeah. all of them. And, um, She's like, oh, these are so great. We love them. You know, we want to kind of talk to you and interview you, um, throw some ideas and see what you think. And um, sure enough, um, you know, I spoke to them and uh, the producer, uh, Jason, and then uh, also Judy. And it turns out Jason, who is like the co-producer of the show, he was just scrolling on Instagram one day and I was like, in someone's picture, like in some, I don't even know, like he wouldn't tell me, he was like, you were in someone's picture, like in the background or like, you know, as like with this person and, you know, you were tagged in the photo and I clicked on you and then I just scrolled down your Instagram and was like, wow, I think this girl's got a story to tell. And I was, I was like blown away. I was yeah, like, super you, cool. yeah. you thought that by looking at my Instagram, what, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, and I told them, you know, basically I told you guys that I grew up, you know, learning how to, learning how to sew and, and sewing with my Barbie clothes and stuff like that. And <laughs> we ended up finding, um, they were like, find some pictures of you and, you know, some stuff. And I was like, okay, so the only costume I could find that was actually like from a comic book character. I was dressed up as Batman. Mm. And of course they couldn't post that in the video. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. But you know, what's crazy though, <laughs> is that Zoe was Batman one year for Halloween. Mm -hmm. Oh, And so look at that. Y'all got something in common. Yes. I was, my mom used to make me, I used to ask to be super crazy things. Like one year I asked to be a pirate ballerina and my mom was like, you got it. And I had more this... pictures to add to the stuff you need to send us. Because I would love I to know what a pirate ballerina looks like. With this like red top and, you know, like, I was, and I, I guess I was a pirate ballerina. Like, I was crazy. My mom was like, yeah, I used to think of weird stuff. And I was like, a pirate ballerina is not that weird if I think about it. No, it's super weird. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I remember when I was watching uh, your episode on Marvel Becoming, um, you were talking about your mom and you said that y'all haven't done like a joint cosplay together yet. Like, no. well, when will we be finally seeing a joint cosplay with you and your mom? 
Um, so they weren't able to kind of show it, but my mom actually made an America Chavez, uh, nice. like sweater, like the casual outfit, yeah, the blue one with the big star in the front, uh, for herself. And she, they filmed her in it. Unfortunately, they were trying to, they pitched my story as a green light to go forward with this new season to have 30 minute long episodes and they got the green light for it. And then Marvel studios was like, eh, no, you can get five minutes or less. And which is good because the, the Marvel becoming episodes used to be, I think it was a minute and 45 seconds. Like they were two minutes or less. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, they chopped us down like all of our entire day of production our entire day of production at Megacon, like they was going to be there were expecting a full 30 minute episode. And they just were like, nope, five minutes or less. That's it. So but it was still good, you know, but my mom actually did make uh, um, an America Chavez costume with me. She just made the alternate outfit instead. Now, um, obviously, in the age of social media, it can be do great things for us like you know, without Instagram, you wouldn't have been on Marvel Becoming. Yeah. So you got the mm -hmm. good stuff. But then, of course, there's also a bunch of crummy people with opinions who are always just, I don't know, hating for no reason. They just want their opinion to be heard. So how do you deal with that stuff? Like, has there ever been a time when you posted a cosplay and somebody just says, you know, outrageous things? Maybe the character's white. And they're saying you can't cosplay them because of your skin color or like anything dumb like that, that you just have to deal with. Um, so, yes, I actually when the biggest the biggest one that I noticed was actually when the America Chavez video got released by Marvel. It was on all of Marvel's social media facets. So it was on their Twitter, on their YouTube, on their Instagram, on their Facebook and I, the comments, I read them and I eventually just stopped reading them because I realized it wasn't really important to me. It wasn't really what justified why I did that costume and how proud I felt making that costume. Like, right. The amount of, I mean, disrespect that there was is just kind of like, oh, you know, is this fat Captain America? Like, you know, like crazy things like oh she looks like she's been eating too many tacos you know and and like oh well you know and, and it's funny because like a lot of these people didn't even know who my character was like they kept calling me like captain america and i'm, I'm like what and yeah. somebody was like is this like the new captain america it's like a fat social justice warrior you know and i'm like you yes, guys I don't am. even know like comics what are you doing you know like when it got to that point where i was just kind of like laughing at like the stupidness and the inaccuracy of their knowledge i was like you know what i can't even be mad now because they don't even know what they're talking about they don't even know who my character is <laughs> you know it was it, it was definitely really hard in the beginning but I had to keep telling myself you know what Shirley this is a once in a lifetime opportunity like you were chosen out of so many people by Marvel themselves you got to work for Marvel Studios and do this amazing once in a lifetime opportunity be proud of what you did and I and I was and and like how proud my mom was you know she was like sending she's like send me the video how do I send it to my family in Argentina how do I send it to my family in Peru and she was sending it to my entire family and they and just seeing how proud she was was like okay I, I you know this was great and I'm not gonna let what these people I don't even know or even like respect their opinion of you know deface my value of what I've accomplished and then you know, when I posted it on my personal Facebook, like in my real life, in my social settings, people were coming to me and were like, oh, my God, you were so good. You were so inspiring. Like, I feel like you're a famous person now. Like I was I was like overwhelmed by the amount of compliments I was receiving by people. Like I was like, gen like definitely embarrassed, like, oh, my God, is this really happening? You know, I'm at work and my employees are like complimenting me on yeah. my Marvel yeah, I mean, costume. well, that's that's a very huge deal. And 
it's like that's the one of the drawbacks of social media is that, you know, for as many positive and compliments that you get, you have those people out there that feel like they have to be negative. And it's like, you know, I know Shirley, like she's a very positive person. You know, she's very humble. She's always posting positive stuff on all of her social media accounts. And, you know, it's messed up that some people can just come and attack you like that and they don't know you. And it's like, you know, instead of being negative, it's like, you know, just be happy for somebody that is uh, doing something. Yeah, that has this opportunity to work with Marvel because it's like, you know, this is like you said, this is a once in a lifetime thing. And like Travis said, you know, out of all these people, you know, you were selected for this. So, you know, I was very proud when you originally announced that they had selected you. And then like, I was real happy when I watched the video because that's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I feel like when we do stuff like this, it makes our parents happy because it's like, you know, they're already proud of us, you know, for things that we do because they're our parents. But then it's like when we do something big like this, like, you know, like me, I'm a professional wrestler. And when I was in the newspaper, it's like my mom was telling everybody and like she was like, oh, my son was in the newspaper, yada, 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 yeah. this and that. So it's like like how you were saying about your mom, like she wanted to share your video with the whole family so that way that they could see it. So it's like, I definitely know the feeling. And, you know, again, Shirley, I'm proud that, you know, you were selected for that. And I, I really hope that, you know, something else comes out of this. Like, you know, maybe we might see you make a cameo and, and the new Avengers movie or something like that. <laughs> Dreams can come true. Yeah. You can, no, rep- you can replace that. him as captain America. You <laughs> captain America? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like- cause yeah. Cause Chris Evans, he is he, done. He's leaving. Yeah. So, like, yeah. since doing Marvel becoming, like, how have things changed for you as a cosplayer? Um, I'd say I feel, I don't know. I feel like every costume I make now has to be, like, even better than the last one. And and I've always kind of had a little bit of that, too. Like, oh, I'm going to be better than... and But, like, now I feel like it has to. Like, I definitely put a lot more work in it. Um, I, I started to stream my costume makings on Twitch. And um, I, I, got, I got to affiliate pretty quickly, which is uh, basically where you have, like, 50 followers, 50 or more followers. Yeah. Um, but it's it's been really fun. I have definitely um, gained a really supportive audience like I from from that. I've gained people who are like, oh, my gosh, you know, I've never thought I could cosplay until I saw you and what a great job you did awesome. and that you were picked by Marvel. And now I want to cosplay and now I appreciate my body more and feel like I have the courage to do these things. Um, it's it's definitely helped make me become a little bit more adventurous, too. Um, I did a modeling campaign for like uh, like hosiery, I guess you could say like a hosiery thing. And I just recently posted that we just got the pictures and, you know, I've never been one to really like show like my stomach or anything like that. I've had a lot of insecurities and now I don't feel like insecure anymore. I definitely feel very empowered. Like, like, yeah, this is it. Like I did this and I I feel very, um, secure with my decisions now, I guess you could say. So I I guess it's definitely changed my outlook and my attitude. Like, like you thought I was positive before and like, I'm like even more like, (laughs) it's like, it's definitely like, bam, in your face and, and just full of excitement. And, and there's just so many possibilities now. Like I, I definitely have fallen even more in love with cosplay and the support that I've received from, and and just even the friends that I've gotten from it too. That's, that's the best part about it. Like no amount of success or money can replace the feel, the feeling of rewardment that you get from your own self. And when you wake up and look at yourself in the mirror and just love yourself. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, I'm the, I'm the same way now. And, uh, 
I'm, I know you've seen the pictures that I've been posted online. Like, you know, I, when I take my gym selfies, I'm not wearing a shirt anymore because it's like, I love myself and I love with where I'm going with my progress of losing weight and whatnot. Sh shirtless summer stunner Shirt early. For shirtless Mr. Banks. Banks. Hey, hey, just to let you know, <laughs> uh, I got my shirt off right now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, I can't. <laughs> When me and Travis sat down to do the podcast, he's like, he immediately came yeah, off. I took his and shirt. I, yeah, he's like, why didn't you say anything? I just looked at him like, all right, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I've, I've, I've been reached out by other people and as a, a positive role model in the, the Latinx c culture, too, which is great. And I love that. And so not just have I, you know, gone from the, you know, the plus size aspect, but like also in the people of color aspect too, which is something I've always been a huge advocate for. And, and I love, I love blurs. I love people of color and, you know, feeling that they feel comfortable being able to cosplay. So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a great feeling. Like you feel like you're on cloud nine and I have not come off of cloud nine since Good. being filled with Marvel. And I'm so happy for you, Ben, like you've been doing such a great job, like giving yourself self love and, you know, Travis, I'm sure you're empowering your, your daughters to do the same thing as well. And That's right. it's, it's just so, it's so cool, you know, like, having that ability to love yourself and then other people loving that you love yourself. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> I def I definitely know what you mean. I mean, like I hear that from a lot of fans, like, you know, when they see the stuff that I post online, especially like the amount of weight that I've lost and everything, like it's like, I've truly inspired people to, you know, start getting into the gym. And, you know, I hear all these stories where, you know, people are just like, you know, you really help motivate me to, you know, change my life around. Cause I've seen like all the weight that you lost. So it's like, it's definitely a good feeling. Yeah, it is definitely knowing that you're not just helping yourself, but other people too. So what advice would you give to people who would like to cosplay, but feel like they can't because of their race, their weight or feeling uncomfortable with how they look? Um, my advice is to, find friends to do it with you. Um, a lot of the friends, the really close friends that I have now, I've actually met through cosplaying or through doing like modeling cosplay events at conventions. And <clears throat> they never let me say a bad thing about myself. And it goes both ways. Like I, you know, I am a positive person and I would never let my friend talk badly about themselves. So if I ever talk badly about myself, my friends keep me in check, you know, like, so I would say make friends, make as many friends as you can, you know, while cosplaying, because it's going to make it more enjoyable. And that's going to bring out all of the confidence that you need. Like, I don't care, like, as much of what other people are like negative things that people are going to say about me, because my best friend that's cosplaying with me thinks I look amazing. You know, like she's the one who's keeping me up and I'm keeping her up. So I would definitely say find a strong supportive circle and you'll, you'll grow. Absolutely. Um, you can at any color, size, height, you know, gender, definitely. I, I've learned so much from the cosplay community in all different, all those different facets you can definitely do it and you can make it happen. If I can make this giant robotic man holding a squishy brain <laughs> right. into a really cute, awesome cosplay that's still recognizable, you know, it's, it's anything's possible. You know, <laughs> you can turn anything into whatever you want as long as you have fun doing it and you find a really cool, you know, supportive circle at the same time. That's what makes the, to me, the nerd community so special. Like, as much as, you know, we talked about it earlier, as much hate and hatefulness that you're going to get from people online, when you're actually there in person with people, it's a high that is like no other. Yeah. And the energy is just so positive. And everybody's talking about how great everybody looks. I've never been to a convention 
and somebody spoke badly on somebody's cosplay. Yeah. All yeah. they do is talk about how great this person looks. I want a picture with you, a picture with you. Yeah. And that makes you feel so good when you got people running up to you, wanting to take a picture with you. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I went to NecoCon for the first time this year, and I cosplayed as Big Smoke from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And my fr- and, and like you were saying, you know, it's it's good to, you know, have a good circle of friends to, you know, so that way you can do cosplays together and whatnot. And me and my friends, we were the Grove Street family. And we were walk we were walking around the con and it was like I remember when I first got there, I was just like, Man, nobody's gonna know who we are. Right, yeah. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure probably only one person is gonna know and they're gonna wanna take a picture with us. And I was so surprised, like when people were coming up today, it was just like, Hey, you're big smoke. And I was just like, Oh snap. They know who I am. Like how you were saying, um, when you did crane, it's just like, it's, it's, it's definitely like a cool feeling when people know who you are and they want to take photos with you and everything. Cause it makes you feel like a little kid. It's even cooler when it's not the like iconic yeah. people like you mm-hmm. were just talking about the Grove street and the crane and stuff like when you think of Ninja Turtles, you're not going to say Krang immediately. Yeah. No. A lot of people are going to do Shredder. You know, that's the most right. yeah. recognizable one. So that's what makes it super cool when you do those kind of characters that are like deep rooted and you all these people recognize you. And it's like, man, the nerdism is real in the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, Shirley, I just want to say thank you again for joining us on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. It was a pleasure having you up here. And before we let you go, I just want you to let everybody in social media world know where they can find Shirley, Shirley, Shirley at. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. You guys have been awesome and so much fun. And you let me rant. Um, You can find me at um, Shirley, Shirley Cosplay. That's S-U-R-E-L-Y and then S-H-I-R-L-E-Y, like the airplane joke. Um, (laughs) I didn't even think about that (laughs) and uh, I've heard it my entire life so I was like you know what why not yeah we're gonna own it today my cosplay name I mean I still get it every day people are like so don't call me Shirley and I'm like ha yeah you're funny and they're like you've heard it before right and I'm like just every day of my entire life (laughs) since that movie has been in existence which was before me um but and then um sorry (laughs) my my twitter is also at Shirley Shirley cosplay um my twitch is also Shirley Shirley might not be Shirley Shirley cosplay I can't remember right now but those are the 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 really big ones and then my facebook is also Shirley Shirley cosplay so just type in Shirley Shirley cosplay and mm. Shirley you'll find me. You'll be there. I like that should be. Your I like new how slogan. she. I like how she ended that. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> should be your new slogan. I and that's crazy. I'm gonna have to uh, follow you on Twitch because I didn't know that um you were on Twitch doing that and I was gonna bring that up earlier but I didn't and then you had mentioned that you already do it. People like live streaming them making a costume and stuff like that. I always think that stuff's cool. Oh, yeah. They've seen me work with all my power tools, my heat gun, my warble. They've seen me burn my fingers. It's been mm. fun time. Now, do you have a <laughs> cosplay utility belt that you use to make these? Yeah, see, there we go. Actually, for Christmas, my parents got me a pink tool set. Super exciting. <laughs> so we're one step there. I was like, there. yes! <laughs> we're one step there. My daughters have pink uh, little toolboxes from Lowe's. That they got. For real? Oh, yeah. I got to see in the these. garage. I got to see them ready. Well, all right. Again, thank you for joining us, Shirley. Yeah. And, and don't forget to send us those photos and the videos and stuff because it's like, I really want to see this stuff. Okay. Thank you so much, Shirley. <laughs> all right. You have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Guys. bye. Yeah, that was really cool that we just had Shirley up here, man. It's like we found out a lot about her. And you know the whole ballerina pirate, and right, you know how the, the kid, the stuff that kids come up with. Yeah, I, but when you think about it, man, it's like we come up with this stuff as kids, and you know you got to have that imagination. Yeah, yeah snowballs. Yeah, snowballs, and, uh, and she ended up becoming a cosplayer, man. So that's really cool, man. And I hope that you know 
what she said last the last question that we asked her about people who want to get into cosplay you know i hope that that helps people out because i feel like that's a big thing in the cosplay community it's like you know you see all these costumes and stuff and it's just like i want to do it but i'm afraid to do it i'm afraid that you know people are gonna look at me funny or they're gonna say i can't do this because of how i look so you know just take what she said and just go with it just have fun go with friends like that's what it's all about man it's having fun yeah i wanted to it like you already brought it up but i was going to bring it up i did not know you know when she told us about the tweets on the marvel becoming twitter and all these people saying all these well i didn't see any of that stuff yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that it existed and i don't go looking for it yeah and when she was saying it I don't know. I was just looking down and I was like, I just can't even believe that people go out of their way to be negative. Cause it's one thing, you know, when they announce like somebody's playing this role or something like that. And we might have like an opinion. And I don't know how that's going to be or whatever, but not enough for me to take the step and like tweet them and, and say that. Yeah. And be this... like, how dare you do what you want to do in life? Yeah. And you can't do that you're gonna look like crap doing it and i don't understand that mindset i don't understand why people come up there and say things like that it doesn't make your day better it doesn't make their day better it doesn't accomplish anything so i'll never understand it and if you're one of those people knock it off don't be that person yeah but i mean because shirley is such a positive person it's like she didn't even let it get to her man and at the end of the day she won you know she was on Mar she got to become on marvel becoming and you know it's like whatever and she's doing what she, she loves to do in and life. she's having fun doing it right. so like that's all that matters it's like you know everybody's gonna always have an opinion about you and it's like you know some of them are gonna be good some of them are gonna be bad but it's like as long you as you can't control that yeah you can't control that and as long as you're having fun doing what you're doing then that's all that matters right so Trav tell everybody where they can find you at on social media land I'm still just Instagram at ZK Audio um maybe I'll get a Twitter one day yeah, you need to get one, man. Maybe. Well, I tried to get a Twitter, and somebody already had the handle ZK Audio from 2013 with no tweets or anything. You need and to hit them up and just be like, hey, I need to get this. that handle, though. Yeah, I need okay. that handle. And <laughs> hey, you can find me, your boy, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. And please make sure to go and like our pages that we have on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Leveling up with Benjamin Banks. And also, you can listen to this podcast on any platform that you choose to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. So whatever you listen to Android. your podcast on, please subscribe please rate us leave us some feedback whatever it is we really appreciate it and be sure to go and follow shirley on all of the social media accounts that she gave and make sure to follow her on twitch too because for those inspiring cosplayers hey you might learn something exactly so uh we're out we're out we're back next week with another hot episode of leveling up and we'll see y'all next tuesday you gotta say the full name Say the okay. full name. All right. Hold on. Well, <laughs> yeah, rewind. Yeah, there you go. So uh, make sure you tune in next week for another hot new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And we'll see y'all next Tuesday. And we're out. Woo! -hoo!